Hi, Amarillo. Alex Fairley here, uh, talking about the tax math for Proposition A. Had a lot of questions about this 39% number. So this number right here, 0 0.151, is 15.1 cents per hundred dollars of valuation. It's the number that the executive committee that studied this project for a year brought to the city council in January, February this year. The number they considered, the number that they agreed with and voted for when they agreed first to put Proposition A on the ballot. This number here was the tax rate at that time, your property, your city property tax rate. 0.151 divided by 3.885 is 38.9%. That's where the 39% came from. Now let me address a couple things. Since they voted on these numbers in, in January, February, March, this number has changed. On October 1st, your tax rates went up. This number now is 0.396 something. And so when you do the division with the new tax rate that happened on October 1st and after I sat down with Lance, the number comes down from 38.9 to 38.1. So if we say 38 or 39, I kind of could give the point on 38, but we would need to acknowledge that we're giving credit to the prop and the council for raising your taxes in the middle of a discussion about raising your taxes. Now let me talk about this number briefly. This number is completely driven by interest rates. The truth is when you pass a bond on a project this long, five years, you're, you don't go the day after the bond election and borrow the money. You borrow the money in different pieces throughout the life of the project because you don't want to borrow money that you don't need to spend until you're three or four in a project. So what actually will happen is if they pass the bond, they'll start borrowing money through the life of the project. And, and every time they go to borrow money, the interest rate that's, that's in play at that time will be the interest rate. None of us know what the interest rate will be. If we went and borrowed $274 million today, this interest rate that drives this point, what, this number would cause that number to be down in the, in the one threes. But just like from, from February until now, the number came from one five down to one three, it's very reasonable over the course of the next five years that it could go right back up to one five or even higher. So the reality is, is the number may land somewhere in between where it is today and this number, it could be higher than that. We won't know until it's over. To be generous, we could say at the very best, in the very best scenario, this number, if everything went perfect and interest rates never changed from what they are today, this number might get down in the 35 range. So pick your number, 35, 37, 38, 39. It's a very high number and the highest tax increase in Amarillo's history. Now let me talk about the other numbers you're hearing, which are five and a half to six percent. I've had a lot of people say, Alex, I hear 39, I hear six, five and a half. Let me explain the five, six and a half version. What that is, is they've taken this tax rate that we've talked about, this 35 to 40, let's call it number, and then they've said, let's add on the, uh, the water tax, let's add on Canyon Independent School District, Annual Independent School District, wherever you live, um, Amarillo College tax, county tax. Add all those together, and this one big in tax increase is only about six, five and a half, six percent of all of those, depending on where you live. In my opinion, that is a distracted version of what's going on, so the proponents don't have to talk about this big tax increase. Amarillo, even if you could live with a 35, 6, 7, pick your number tax increase, you can't be okay with a project that could be done for $100 million less. Here's my commitment. The group of people that put together the Hodgetown deal have been working very hard on this for two months. If this proposition doesn't pass on November 3rd, by Christmas Day, that group of people will bring a proposal to the city council to consider that will be a brand new Coliseum downtown across the street from Hodgetown. And it will have an NHL affiliate AA hockey team in it. That hockey team will bring 200,000 people to downtown that Prop A won't bring, 
because Prop A doesn't have an anchor tenant and can't have an anchor tenant. It will house every concert that Prop A proposes that it can bring, it will house every one of them. It will take care of every graduation without a ticket, and it will take care of the WRCA with at least a 50% increase in seating capacity. And here will be the numbers. We will do it for less than $110 million. We'll do the Civic, Civic Center expansion later, but $110 million, instead of talking about, pick your number, 35, 36, 39, we'll be talking about 15. And instead of five and a half or six, if you want to look at the watered down version, we'll be talking two, two and a quarter. And those are the numbers that I think taxpayers ought to be focused on as they go to the polls on November 3rd. Thanks for listening.